with our lovely accommodations. Um, do you guys want anything to drink? Uh, I'm good. Not I. Okay. I'll probably have to pee because I had three cups of coffee. We will let you out. <laughs> and I never uh, drink no, three sweat them. <laughs> sweat them. It's I, like I, I never drink that much coffee in the morning. Oh, um, I but like I didn't sleep well last night, so um, I just hammer. After we spoke, I put you in my phone and contacts. Uh -huh. As you know, Facebook now then pulls. Yes, uh -huh. and you keep coming up. Yeah. And I was saying, isn't it dangerous? <laughs> dangerous? Well, I don't work undercover, so. Well, anyway, so I, I just yeah, thought I'd a, share that. Yeah. No, there's a variety of opinions on, on all of that. But how are you? I'm well, sir. How are you? Uh -huh. all right. Looking dapper, Mr. Brad Lewis. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. How are you doing? Doing real good. Doing good. good. You know, the problem with uh, you know not being on the government dole right. is. Uh, you know, your income goes from this to this. Right. Yeah. Well, see, when you're on the government dole in the state system. <laughs> oh, well, hey, okay. Federal state, anyway, so, state yeah. huh? Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to work a free lunch out of her today, but I don't see that. I did get coffee, though. Coffee. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. No, I, you have a snack, I think. I am welcome. I'll appease you. Is so everything well with you all, all right, I'm in a closed store right now, but this room gets a little hot. So if okay. it's hot, okay. let me know. I, I, yeah. warn you, I think I told you I drank three cups of coffee no, this morning, yeah, so I'm a little hyped. We so. don't have a bathroom in here, but right outside well, the store, that. so please just let me know because I need to use the bathroom quite frequently myself. In fact, my kids drive me crazy about it. They're like, why do you have to go to the bathroom so much? I'm like, wait till you get my age. In your 40s and have had two kids. We'll see. Huh. See, and I have a different answer. Which when you're almost 60. This is my birthday, so it's 58, yes. Yeah, so happy birthday. birthday. Well, thank you. I get to spend it with Fs. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> my daughter's birthday was yesterday. Oh, uh, oh boy. <laughs> you know who else's birthday is today? No. Barack Obama. Is it? I didn't realize that. I know, right? My buddy's just right on the uh, Leo. Right? Leo. Yeah. Um, well, to let you know what we do record in this okay. room, so just to make you aware of that. Um, obviously, that's really for your protection in the end, so we're not twisting your words or giving your statement as, a, as it is. Um, but thanks for contacting us sure. and coming in today. We certainly always appreciate to hear. You know, there's two sides of more, more than two sides to every story. Sure. So, um, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, I mean, Obviously, it's a voluntary effect, but we want to obviously the thing that we're trying to capture is everything untruthful. Okay, sure. so if you don't mind, if you raise your right hand, you swear on a test to tell the whole truth, not the best truth self you got. So let me get it. And I'm sure your attorney has already informed right. you, but right. just making sure that you're aware of that um, because I am a federal agent, lying to a federal agent itself is a crime, false sure. statements. So, um, but basically, just you know, you wanted to come in and talk, we just wanted to hear what. Well, obviously, I'm concerned that whenever anybody subpoenas somebody, you know, especially with the federal grand jury, you yeah. get concerned. So, and the subpoena was concerning um, all the documents concerning Hoppers, yeah. designated driving service. So, and I don't know what documents you have and what documents you don't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I separated myself from Hoppers, and I can get into all the gory details of why we separated ourselves, but there's no sense in beating somebody else down. But when I separated myself from Hoppers, I was one of the co-signers of an economic development fund back in 2001. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was under the impression through email that I still have that this individual was going to pay it back because he kept the business of Hoppers and was going to pay me when he sold the business, my portion of the business, through verbal agreement, no written contract there. But the email did say that he was responsible. I believe I have that at home. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you would like a copy, I'll get you a copy. But I think that was that in the documents for this city. No, this. Not with agreement for. Okay. There was a ver yeah. there was a written email agreement between one of my partners and this that he would take care of the economic development loan. Now we fast forward to 2003 2004 time frame, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and you're referring to Hammer, Mr. Hammer, right? Yeah. We're referring. Well, actually, both Hammerks. Kenny yes. and yes, Chris. Uh, he goes Steve. by Chris. Yeah. Stephen Chris. Mm -hmm. Let me preface it this by telling you guys I was his drone instructor in 1982. Mm -hmm. the time for, uh, and I was very close to his age because I was the youngest DI in the Army at that time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so, and you remember the, the, the excuse me, the assholes and remember the superstars. 
And that's why the police came out. So, yeah. so and he was he was a good troop back then. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll get into more details about that later. But I wanted you to know that I had that relationship with him back then. So now we fast forward to 2004, 2005 time frame. I get served with a document, eventually get served with a document that goes to my sister, that finally makes its way to me, that says I owe the economic development loan back. I said, well, wait a minute. I called Chris on the phone. I said, Chris, I thought, he goes, well, when I sell the business, I'll pay it off. I said, perfect. Then I get served with documentation, and this is to the best of my memory. I don't recall exact dates and time. I get served with documentation that says, you still owe $15,000. Well, I'm the only one, from what I understood at the time, with decent credit. So I, I, I went to the city manager and I said, look, what can I do to make this right? And the city manager at the time wasn't Lee Feldman, it was an interim city manager. And then Lee Feldman came on board once I met with Nick Sam McKellis, who's the guy that was a city attorney at the time. I went to Nick and I said, Nick, I said, what can we do to make this right? And he goes, well, I'll tell you what, Dave, if you pay back your third, your third on this, we'll make this right. He said, you give me a check for $250 of, of uh, good faith money, and, we'll, we'll, and then we'll work out a payment plan, a payment arrangement. But what I did, instead of doing that, I gave him the $250 that day, then I wanted this off my back. So what I did was I refinanced a portion of my house. I'm not sure how we did it, but with, and if you look at my records, it will show that I had a second on my house. I believe we borrowed against the house on it, and we paid it back right away, because I didn't want that alligator and I paid him back right then and there. I got a document in the mail at that point, at some point, that said, your portion is paid in full. But can I give him the checks? Yeah, please. I, my wife is a saint, and she's a, <laughs> she's a lot of things. If you look here, here's the fifth, first $250 check. An organized saint? Yes. Mm -hmm. She's my girl. She's a great job. If you read the remarks section, it says economic development, we love the dates. Yeah. And then just right here, same thing. And it says paid, but I know it should be. Are you sweet and creepy? Yes. Okay. Are they the originals? Uh, I, sure. Well, they're definitely not the originals. No, the original. <coughs> is it just copies of the best? Because I know I have the originals, I just don't want to. I can make copies and get them back. No, these are, these are copies. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, and those are better looking than. Mine. Yeah, that's a really nice copy. Yeah. So uh, I, I paid that back and forth. Obviously, Chris, uh, Chris Hamrick and I had a strained relationship. Now, is this your, this portion is your case? Is that, should I be directing my statement to you or to both of you? Uh, we're, we're working together. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how this is. I don't know. Let me buy you a cup of coffee. So, so, uh, um, so, we got, uh, we got, I, I paid back the city, and you guys got to know this about me. Uh, uh, Private Hammer, now retired Sergeant Hammer, I have, a, I have a special place in my heart for him. I trained him and I sent him off to war, and he got severely wounded. Whether you guys think that much about it, I, I really don't care. It means something to me. He came back a different man. He's, he's not right in his head. He's uh, a drunk now. Uh, when I went into business with him, I saw a lot of things that he was doing I didn't particularly care for. That's why I was only in business with him a short period of time. When I stayed in business with him, I saw some of the things he was doing, and I said, you know what? I feel bad for this guy. He's very vile, he's very angry, but I, I have an obligation, he's one of my soldiers. And I still feel that to this day. If he called and needed my help, I would show up. And that's just the way it is. That's a lifelong thing, we're joined at the end. I'm not ashamed of that. I do that for any of my troops. Okay, so with that being said, uh, me and Chris sever ties. 2005, I paid everything off. And we get to that point, and those are the documents you want. Is there anything else I can do other than the fact to say that I had nothing to do with the, uh, and should I go into that portion or should I allow them to ask questions? Um, portion. Should I go into the portion where yes. it's, it's yes. evident that I'm not? Uh, sometime after I became the deputy city manager in the city of Palm Bay, I was approached by Andrew Lane, our city attorney, mm -hmm. in the summer of 2015. I'm not sure it was during or after the fact that, that he recommended that they forgive Chris Hamlet's portion of the loan. I truly did not know, because Chris sold the business in 2005. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I thought that he paid the whole thing off, the rest of it off there. Yeah. I, I wasn't receiving any more mail. I hadn't gone anywhere. You know what I'm saying? I, this is my home. I was raised here my whole life. I graduated school. So, I'm, you know, I'm not going anywhere, you know, so uh, minus the 22 years I spent in the service. So I thought it was paid where we're doing it until him, uh, uh, Len, uh, An Andrew uh, uh, <coughs> brings it up to my attention. And I said, well, really, I can't be involved with that in any way, shape, or form. You have to deal with Greg on that issue. He sent an email. This is a copy of the email to Greg Link that sp specifically said that he had a conference call with with uh, with Chris Hamrick, and and they decided that uh, he was going to forget the loan. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't have any part of the decision making process on that. And you weren't curious. I was absolutely yeah. curious. But you I mean, didn't ask your coworkers. Well, it, I think he says it pretty clearly in there that. Because was it the issue with them wanting to give him the house, and this was sort he of. He already had the house at that time. Okay. You okay, play Bridget. Please. You guys already got that? Okay. Um, I have a bunch of stuff. I do have this one. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if it was during or during. Now, I will tell you at this at one point that once the document was signed off by the city manager, uh, uh, my secretary gave me a stack of paperwork that had to go back to Wounded Warriors that had just gotten their house on uh, City Wounded Warriors. Uh, secretary, when you say the secretary, who Meg, Meg Davidson. Meg Davidson gave me a, a, a stack of paperwork that had to go back to Chris Hammer. Chris Hammer and I were moving stuff from his garage to the next house that we were doing, or maybe even the fourth house after that. I think it's blurred by the mm -hmm. But we, we had stuff. It wasn't uncommon for us to donate a house and store all the stuff in a new person's garage until we started the next project. Because we didn't have, we were really tight for storage. Yeah. So, so, and so he's, you know, at that point, we needed both trucks to move the stuff, I believe, to the Wagner's house or maybe even to the Taylor's house on Raspberry. Uh, so we ended up moving the stuff over to the next place. And if I was going over there anyway. I took the paperwork. I put it in an envelope. I remember like it was yesterday because uh, Chris made a big deal when he had a phone call with me a couple of weeks ago that uh, I dropped off the paperwork to his house. I said, of course I did. I mean, I was going there anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I gave him the paperwork. Uh, and, and we did whatever we did wherever we would go that night. I Sorry, maybe I, I lost, you might have said this and I lost it in the detail. What was the paperwork? The paperwork was the loan forgiveness that Greg had already signed, that Greg signed. Okay. But you still didn't completely understand why the city decided to do that? I, I thought it was pretty clear in Andrew's letter there where he didn't have the resources to pay it back okay. because he was on but disability. But I mean, so many years have passed, why does it come up at this point? Well, it, well, I would imagine it came up through some sort of budgeting or auditing process to where they came back and said, okay, you know, this guy already owes us. It's not uncommon for us to forget liens or debt, just yeah. so you know. Um, uh, and I imagine it came back to where they said, okay, this is an issue here. You know, we, we've just given this house to this guy. We're, we're going to forgive his, you know, we're probably going to not forgive his debt, but look into whether or not he can pay now, uh, Chris made it a big point, to, you know, and just so you know, Chris called me and told me, you guys asked him to wear a wire, you guys did a bunch of things, and you forced him to talk and everything, and I just took it as rhetoric. And I, I took it as somebody who suffers from post-traumatic stress, who, and, who's trying to cover his butt, or, and, I, and I strongly encouraged him to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And I told him to tell the truth, uh, no matter what the circumstances were, because we had nothing to hide. And, and that's, so, I, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, John. <laughs> I'm too late, right? I'm, I'm in the bushes. No. Uh, am fine. I fine? Okay. So that's kind of where we are with the whole thing. Yeah. I, I don't know what you guys, what else you guys want from me concerning this issue. Um, well, we had some other things we wanted to ask you about. Sure. If that's okay. But did you have anything else specifically on this? I mean, the city produced a lot of documents earlier in the week um, that we reviewed. So I think that. The production of documents clear that's something you can have already. Yeah, I mean, I was just kind of, what was Chris saying that 
what was he? I, I missed that whole part about how he's trying to go out off and wear a wire. Right. He Chris told me that he called me and texted me the night that you guys came by. Yeah, I believe you guys came by in the day. You and I guess you and one yeah. other agent came by his house. Is what he yeah. said. And he, and I, the previous week I had taken him to lunch because we had had a falling out. And and I believe strongly in taking working with these young men that have suffered for our country. And and I have too big of a heart. Landon calls me a pit bull recovery because everybody I try to help bites me in the ass. Excuse me. Well, Chris was part of not to interrupt you, but to interrupt you. Um, when Chris was part of, he ended up getting a home. Sure. Uh, um, and he was involved in this place. Can you walk us through that whole Space sure. Coast Paratrooper involvement? Absolutely. Well, what happened was, and, and this is to the best of my memory now, please, if I, if I get the sure. dates wrong, I'm sorry. Sometime in the early portion of the program, um, the program being the Space, Space Coast Church? Paratroopers, mm -hmm. the Home for Warrior program, mm -hmm. there are two separate entities. You guys know that? Well, I mean, we've heard bits and pieces, but if okay. you can, sometimes if we let someone else explain it, it kind of makes things a little bit more clear to us. All right. So if you can just it's two talk separate. to us like we don't know anything. Okay. okay. And, 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 and it can stop me if you have a question, Brad. Please don't. don't uh, please do. There's two separate entities. You have the Space Coast Paratroopers Association, which is a private nonprofit that was started by myself and two other paratroopers. And you have the uh, Home for Warrior program, which is the SHIP program from the city of Palm Bay. And who are the two other paratroopers? That would be Javier Molineris and Jerry Lawson. Okay, and then, and other members, we don't, we're not a membership. The reason for our organization as paratroopers was to build a network of wounded warriors that helped each other uh, in time of need. I went with and saw Dave Watkins in 2008 on this, with this idea of building a community of, uh, of uh, wounded veterans, my son, of all people, uh, when we started looking at lands and properties and, and things like that, uh, Angelo, uh, who's a combat wound and a traumatic brain injury, uh, told me, he said, Dad, the last thing I want to do is be really next to a bunch of wounded warriors. <laughs> I want to I want to get back into the community. But anyway, so so we've now we fast forward, I believe around 2011, 2012, we started Space Coast Paratroopers Association. Um, and, and I was approached by Bob Williams of the city that said, look, you have this paratroopers association. We have this home for warrior. Why don't we do this? We put our heads together and we came up with the idea. The, uh, they had already started the home for warrior, I believe, program. And at this point, you work at the county? I work for Andy Anderson, was chief of staff. Okay. And it's, it's, a, not, it's a passion thing. It's a, it's a weekend thing and it's a, a, a not after work thing. Um, so, what was, your, what was your role with Space Coast Paratroopers? What did you I, do? I was the title, face of the organization. I was the vice president, and okay. I was the face of the organization. Who was the president? Javier Molineris. You are vice president. Right. What was Javier's responsibilities? Uh, keeping, because we didn't have an administrator, he was responsible for keeping minutes. Uh, I mean, several things. Uh, administrative stuff, anything administrative stuff other than treasure. Okay. And you were vice president. What was your role? Operations. I was what? I had to go find all the volunteers. I had to feed them. I had to, I had to get ready for the big ribbon cuttings. I had to deal with the day-to-day -day operations of building the house. Not day-to-day -day operations, but whenever I had volunteers or building the house. So what, what were the volunteers? What did they do? We had general contractors there. See, the whole key So when you're saying everything, are you just specifically talking about homes for warriors, or the big four paratroopers were they broader than the, the homes for warriors? Yeah, they, they were. We paid water bills sometimes for bully boys that, that didn't have money, you know what I'm saying? It was a broad organization in that, but our primary focus was on the family. There was a lot of organizations out there that cater to the single warrior that lives in the woods, and there's, but there's none that cater to the family that transitioned back in. But as we saw with my son, who wasn't getting his benefits, and he fought two years to get his benefits. Uh, so, and when we finally got his benefits, I mean, he could have easily qualified for this course, I mean, I wouldn't do it because of, for obvious reasons. But, but uh, uh, you know, he lives close to us, so my wife would regulate his medicine. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because he's yeah. a registered. But, so but, the, did the volunteers do the actual labor? Sure. Of homes? Yeah, did, did, absolutely. Did, did they? Um, did you hi also hire laborers? No, I didn't hire anybody. Uh, the city would also hire uh, get contractors to come in. The key was was get a general contractor that was willing. And, and I did work for the city at the time, so I'm not sure of how they did it, 
I've never got that deep into that section of the program, but they would bring in contract employees like a contractor. They would bid on getting a job, and we would provide the labor hours. It's nothing to paint a wall. I mean, you can teach anybody to do that. If you're going to be doing something more technical like, like electricity, you can get the guy to run the wire, but he can't hook it up to the box. You know, it has to be a contractor that does that. And all you know, and none of our people ever got hurt. Uh, nothing more. But I mean, and that was the key. If we could keep the labor costs down, we could do more houses, and that was the whole key to the volunteers. What about materials to build the homes? Were those donated items? Or some were donated. Some we bought. We bought uh, washers and dryers and, and paratroopers. When you say we, the paratroopers uh, yeah. purchased those items. The Space Coast Paratroopers Association, they did now. They're another, another organization that existed now. Um, and at the time, who was responsible for actually purchasing the items? I don't know. I think, I think, uh, I think Jared was maybe? He was the treasurer. But it may have been Javier. Or we would get a check signed from one of those guys, because I wasn't, I couldn't sign checks. I wasn't on a bank. I had a P card, but I couldn't sign a check. And, and we'd get a check from Javier, and the city would get a discount, I believe, my memory serves me. I'm not sure, like we bought washers and dryers for the hammer house, I think, and mm -hmm. a dishwasher. Those are things that ship will pay for. Things that ship with PCA fans and stuff like that. Uh, special types of cabinets that you need, you've got no legs. Mm -hmm. You can't open a refrigerator. Well, who would go off when you, when you look at the, the expenses like that, like something substantial like a washer or dryer. How what was the process? Because you say you've got Javier is the president, you're the vice president, you've got Jerry is the treasurer. So I mean I assume that Jerry wouldn't just go on go on off and go, hey, I'm gonna go out on my own and just buy a washer. There mm -hmm. had to be a process when there was purchasing of anything of, of substance. So oh, how yeah. did that how did the whole approval process go? But because there was only three of us, I would need one other vote if I were going to spend money. Mm -hmm. And I always mark my words on this. I never ever spent a dollar of that money that I didn't call one of those two and ask permission to get their vote. And was that, was the permission to get another board members to spend money, was that documented anywhere? That, that was Javier's responsibility. I gave a bunch of receipts to them when I was leaving the organization mm -hmm. that they didn't have with, the, with the, the, the person's name that I spoke to in the back of the receipt. Who'd you give those to? Javier Molinares. And where are all those receipts? Coming? I don't know. I, don't, I haven't had access to those guys since 2016. Okay, so just for clarity, you're saying every time you spend funds for space for paratroopers, you had the concurrence of another board member, that sure. Jerry or Javier, without Even one. exception. Without exception. I don't believe that I ever spent. At one point, they did give me a limit to spend. Mm -hmm. I think it was a $100 limit to spend. But I don't think I ever. Uh, I mean, I may have the, the, the I, I don't recall, I can't recall. I don't know if I ever used that because I just never felt comfortable. Now, the organization is a very good organization. Where we lacked was three guys that were trying to put the organization together. We have never done anything like this before. I was very honest in the newspaper and I said this was the first time we'd ever done anything like well, this. Dave, that's, that's, why, that's why I bring it up because, you know, one of the things that was brought up was that there was this frivolous spending. And you're saying that basically whenever you did any spending, uh, on behalf of the organization or promoting it, that you gave, you produced receipts, or you got receipts, you signed those receipts and turned those over to uh, Okay. I, well, I, I, I thought I, I, the, the other important point was whoever you got concurrence would be on that receipt. On the, on the back of the receipt. Okay. Uh, but I gave those, and I'm not sure that everyone made it there. I want to be very clear on that. What um, do you mean by that? Um, you ever lose receipts? I mean, when you don't see these guys for a couple of months at a time. Yeah, but, so you're saying you always turned in receipts, and now you're saying you're not sure. So I'm just no. trying to get clarity on okay. it. Okay, I'll be very clear. I'm not sure that he got 100% of the receipts back. Okay, and, and what, is that because you mailed them? Or because I suck at administrative. Okay, I mean, so then you, back to the original, did you get permit or the concurrence of another board member with every use of the Every car? use of the car. That's something I never wavered on. Because I didn't want those guys to be surprised. And I don't think they would waver off that either because they I call them at strange times, you know, you know, for you know, Sunday afternoon picking up a ceiling fade. Those guys, see I was the operation guy. I went out to the house, I actually installed the ceiling fan. Probably ran the air conditioning ducts. 
but if we needed clamps and I couldn't find the city to have the clamps, I would just wouldn't bought them. Or needed a sheet of plywood. I went I just went and, you know, for whatever reason, whatever we needed to get the, the mission done. My biggest mistake that I made the, the entire time of the Space Coast Paratroopers was I saw that we had a deficiency in our administrative work. I reached out to a guy named Don Overton. I brought him on board. Don Overton assured me that he ran a nonprofit or uh, a nonprofit thing for Senator Edwards, uh, uh, U.S. Senator Edwards, and, and he he's a national nonprofit. So I I called him a godsend from day one. And he's, I said, look, these books are jacked up. I need your help getting this fixed. We have to file our 990s. He goes, no problem. Dave, we're going to take him care of. And the entire time that he was taking care of, he told me, okay, we got this audit done. We got this loop closed. We got this book. But he was bad for me, and he took on the face of the organization. Because now I'm starting to move into a city position. Now I can't mix and match. At the time, was your wife working in an elected position? <laughs> I think she was elected up to 2014, and then she was, um, yeah, no, because I, I never worked for the city while she was a councilman. Mm -hmm. It was like a year and a half later. I went to work for the city. So, no, she wasn't. Now, at the time that the homes were going on, yes, yeah, she was. Some of the homes, not all of them. I mean, I think the first three homes. Uh, like I said, we're a volunteer organization, nonprofit. Yeah. We were saving the city a lot of money. If you look at the cost of the first house compared to the last house, do me a favor, guys. Go out there on tomorrow morning to the home that's being built for the next war and count the volunteers. There's not one there. That's where the organization went. When I did it, there was 25 to 50 people every Saturday morning that showed up. You try to get 25 people to show up anywhere on a Saturday morning. I don't have to tell you. For free of charge. Right. But you know, the, the, all the scuttle buckets going around. Sure. That, you know, this frivolous spending, this Dave is already this, Dave is already that. So the questions we're asking are ones that, are, that, that people are asking. We have to. Uh, I'm sorry for my frustration. It's just no. I've been understand. on the front page three days this week. Mm -hmm. Understand. And, and you know my career is over. No one will hire me from henceforth. It's it's done. I'm 58 years old today, and if I went to apply, if I lose my job at the city, I'm done. I, I mean I, I'd have to do something else with my life. So. Uh, well, I'm sure. I would assume you have seen the whistleblower. Sure. From Overton, because I, I think he sent it to Florida today. And oh, yeah, yeah, and the buddy sent it to yeah, pretty everybody. much everybody. Right. Um, mass I mean, out, I think. In there, it seems to make some very specific accusations uh, about you misusing funds yeah. for personal entertainment. and. When, when you put together a nonprofit organization, I was the face of the organization. There's one thing that I do a lot better than most people that I work with, and that's network. Before you, you continue, um, there was an audit completed as he was exiting and Overton was coming in mm -hmm. that gave the organization a clean bill of health. All right, please continue. Right. Um, can you, um, do you have a CPA who conducted the audit? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would You had yeah. a friend that you knew that, was, that reviewed the books no. at one point? No, I, I called in Dwayne, uh, Wayne Cooper, right. and we were going to use Wayne. Uh, I recommended to the board that we use Wayne. When it, and that's the same time that Don Overton was coming in, and he kind of took the reins of April of 2015. He, he kind of, you know, there was that transition there. I, I don't think you guys understand how big we were getting and how quickly we were getting. I couldn't manage it, guys. I'm not a nonprofit person. I, I, was, I was working every single night after work and every weekend trying to manage this stuff. And I was, I was drowning. And when Don came on board, I thought I had somebody who was there to help me, not, not kill and eat me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so at what point do you um, separate yourself from the Space Coast Paratroopers? I think the slow transition was started in April of 2015, thereabouts. Because I sent him an email. Well, hold on. And when were you at? When was I what? When, when was the audit complete? And the, the, the initial audit was complete in August of 2016 or 2015. I, I'm not sure. You'd have to. And then I left the organization. I was just a board member at that point. He had taken over the, the, the operations side. And, and do you recall who did the audit? I don't know. He said he had a forensic audit done. Okay. That was after. That was in, and, and I welcomed that. 
because I wanted those books to get straight up. The last thing I want is Bob's Diaries. Yeah. You know, so are you guys? <laughs> yeah. Well, it doesn't, at least from our side, it doesn't seem that there were any receipts or any documentation of concurrence or. You got a guy whistleblowing on me that, that, that is in charge of those documents now. And you see what he's doing to other city council members, you see what he's doing. Uh, th th this whole thing, I believe in my heart of hearts, is political. I honestly believe this. Did you know that Jeff Bailey and Don Overton are, are our neighbors? They live across the street from each other. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, Jeff Bailey wanted to introduce Don. Jeff Bailey's not a fan of mine or my wife. So, and it's all politics. I believe it's politics. And mm -hmm. so he puts Jeff. Why is Jeff Bailey not a friend? I helped him get elected, believe it or not. If you look at pictures of election night, you see him in my house. Uh, so uh, why is there a rift between you and him? I, I, the, the only thing I can think of is is that he, there was a rift between Trey and he, and I, I refused to get take sides. And Mr. Bailey's asked me on several occasions to become the sixth vote prior to him this night. Because I need a sixth vote to push my agenda. And that's slang and public administration will to say, I go out with the votes for Jeff. You know what I'm saying? Like you give your support. Well, I, I go to the council members and I sell them the idea that we want to do weddings. And, I, and it just doesn't work that way, guys. It, you just, you can't get five politicians to agree on what day of the week is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So okay. Um, I think when we got uh, sidelined, I interrupted you. And you were right. going to talk about, um, fr about frivolous, fr frivolous spending. Uh -huh. Anytime I spent a dollar, it was for the organization. I never once spent any money on myself or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, there's hot, there's uh, cigars in there. Yes, yeah, so there, what were the cigars for? There, there was probably two or three purchases of cigars. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the bikers did their runs uh, and we gave a house away or we had a fundraiser, I passed a cigar and a little pin on each one of the bikers, you know, the, for the American Legion riders and stuff like that. But the biggest expenditure, I believe, was 190 bucks. Very life of the deputy sheriff of uh, uh, George Maxwell's uh, uh, bailiff. Uh, I believe he was George Maxwell's bailiff. He won that in an auction. There were, there were special cigars that we would buy uh, for that occasion. I got them at cost. They're actually 25 to $30 a piece. They're Patrons. You know cigars? Okay. Yeah, the Libra Patrons. Liberty Patrons, I believe, is what they're called. So, um, Long story short, he bid, he outbid me and another guy for those cigars. But I told the newspaper that, but they didn't put it in. I didn't say who. I, uh, I didn't want them to you know, you know, bury it. You can understand our concern. You sure. see all these expenses over and over again uh, during the course of interviews, as well as going off and looking at records. We're not finding anything to support the fact that you know, you're telling us that you've got approval for each and every thing. You're telling us that you're submitting receipts, and yet we're not finding support that so you can understand why we're asking sure. these questions because we're not finding anything other than I'm you not. standing before us and saying this is the way Did you happen. ask the other board members if they, they didn't get calls from me for approval? We spoke to a lot of people. Okay. If you asked them they, and they they should have said Happy Heart was pretty upset with the way I was expending it and I told him if he wanted to be the face of the organization for him to do it. Uh, you know, so I, what did the, what did, when you say you refer to the face of the organization, what did that actually mean? What did you mean? I, I was the guy that was out at every single project. I was the guy that raised volunteerism through networking, through Facebook, social media, anything I could do, radio, anything we could do uh, to get volunteers to show up and coordinate that. And that in itself is a full-time job. Uh, and I, I had to feed those guys, uh, you know, I had to water those guys. You know. let, me, let, me, let me move past that because I, I mean, I get that concept of things. My also understanding is, David, that there was at, at some point you were the face of gathering not only the, the, the good press for what you're doing and the people, but also the contributions. And let's face it, a couple of things that have come up in the pool table. A couple of things that have come up are uh, the air conditioning. I'm not, I'm not telling you anything you're not right. already aware of, so why don't we just get, you know, clear the air and just talk about well, let's, what about What about the air conditioning, first off? Was that something that was approved? How did we, how did that whole thing go? I don't even remember what year it was. It was before Trey was in office. Trey did a lot of work for us with the Paracruise Association. He was responsible, or partially responsible, for us getting a grant donation from Home Depot 
and he was also responsible for getting Chloe Clark to donate properties to the organization. Eight lots, five grand a piece, he figured it out. That's $50,000 or $40,000. And how did Trey make that happen? Trey, Trey knows these people and he went out on our behalf and represented us to do these things. Mm -hmm. He and worked his buds off. Um, I guess back up to um, when did Space Coast Paratroopers start a relationship with Trey? Was it first informal? When did it become formal? I mean, you can, I'm, say, I, I'm not going to hold you to dates, but you can, you know. I'm going to guess around 20, in 2013, maybe. Maybe. Spring of 14. And, and how exactly did it work? You guys at, approached him and asked him for help. He approached you just because you guys know each other. How did that? Play at out? the time, the board had big ideas of grandeur, and what we were doing is we were we were gathering information, I mean um, materials, and putting them in storage. Then you buy we, materials, uh, construction materials, or no, donated items. Donated items, okay. and putting them in storage. We had at one time three big giant storage sheds. And, and our goal end game was to start a thrift store. Okay. Was that the thrift goal or your goal? That was that was my goal until I could get it before the board. I got board approval to, to move forward with it. My wife and I were going to put the upfront money, and we were going. My hope was is that the spouses of the wounded warriors could work at the thrift store, making extra income. But and the thrift the proceeds from the thrift store would pay the rent and go back to the paratroopers. At one point, I wanted the paratroopers to be self-sustaining. I didn't want to have to rely on them. That was my goal. Now, that got all, I had plans made up. You didn't have to rely on what, donations? I didn't want to have to rely on, on ship funding to build those houses, the, the city funding. Mm -hmm. And once you build the community, hopefully, wounded warriors are finite. Thing. So was the thrift store um, your business venture working with the paratroopers? Or I didn't have paratrooper permission at that point. What I did was I wrote, I paid for all of the, all of the plans. I paid for everything out of my personal pocket mm -hmm. to do this. And then I was going to bring it to the board. Because we didn't have meetings like every month. We had meetings once a quarter, maybe once every four months. It was just three of us. So we do three-way calls. Uh, but I knew I had to have the support of the, the other board members to do this. Yeah. So I wanted to give them an idea. I even said one went as far as to sign a lease once I had permission from them for us to for me and my wife to do the upfront spending and then sign a lease back to them saying this is what we're we're trying to accomplish. That's when Don Overton was coming into the fold. Don Overton changed the title to executive director when he came into the fold and took the organization in a different path. And and, and that's fine because you know you that's its advantages, you know. Uh, those guys wanted to do certain things uh, that I didn't want to do, mm -hmm. or change faces. That's why I have no problem with that. Okay, so I guess back to the donated items. So you're collecting these donated items because you have this idea to start this thrift store, right? And ultimately, the proceeds from the store would go to you and your wife because you own the business, or no. it's. My back. wife and I had the full intentions of donating that back to. It never got off the ground. Yeah. Never. I got an but email you did on take my the phone. Donated items. The donated items, right? Yeah. I didn't inventory those. Yeah. I didn't keep track, and that wasn't my way. The donated items. That was. I believe it was Javier's way. I believe it was. Okay. So you would get donations. I would just put them in a the storage shed. And Eric Davidson was a supply staff sergeant from the army, mm -hmm. and he did an inventory where I believe. Don Overton when Don Overton, because at that time, we, that's when we started getting real big. Don Overton came in and they went out there and did a complete inventory together. He was a supply guy. Mm -hmm. I had never done an inventory. I just would grab the stuff because we would get stuff. Well, for instance, let's say about the, the pool table. That was something that was brought sure. up. Sure. So it was a pool table that was donated, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, to the organization. Yes. Correct? Yes. Or was that donated by? Uh, Wendy Fleetfish. Okay. How do you know Wendy? She's a limo driver. She donates her time to ride limos. Yeah. For the limo owns the company, drop, donates her time, and drop the. Uh, Tell you how that goes out. So, so two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, I get a phone call from Wendy, and she goes, "I just, I just want a, a pool table at an auction." Mm -hmm. So I said, "Okay, congratulations." Thanks. She goes, "Because I don't, I don't know where I'm going to do with an 800 pound pool table." Mm -hmm. So I said, "I said, I said, okay, Wendy, I said." 
what, what do you want to do? She says, well, I want to donate to the paratroopers and have you guys auction it off. Well, when we got the pool table, Scott Sorensen's kid, uh, his uh, crew brings it over to a, a buddy of mine's commercial property, where it still sits to this day. And he has sent a number of letters to Don Overton asking him to remove it. And that, and so I'm, who's, who's property is that? It's Joe Aguiar's property. Okay, and why was this brought to you? So I didn't have a place to put it. Okay. I, I mean, my storage facilities were cramped packed, uh, I, and that needed to be in a climate controlled area if it's a decent pool table. If it's not, it warps up and stuff. So what, what was this property? Like? It was a commercial piece of property. It's like, okay. a, like an office thing, building thing. Yeah. And had an he, apartment in the back. Okay, and who was living in the apartment? At that time, nobody. Do you want me to keep going? Yeah. Oh, okay. Give me this. You kind of looked at it. Yeah. All right, so. so an odd place to put the paper. Where, 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 where else would I put it? I don't know. I don't know Mr. Aguilar's connection. So, so it was climate control. Right. That's and that's why you selected this place. I, I called and asked him. I, said, I knew he owned a bunch of commercial property. Mm -hmm. I said, Joe, I got this pool table that's getting donated to me. She does all my limo driving. I don't want to insult her. We got a place where we can put this pool table. And Joe said, Yeah, I got the building over there and I keep the tunnel. On. And so he, he, he more than happily put the put the uh, pool table in the building. Is it fully assembled or disassembled? No, disassembled and we put it together when we got there. The guys helped me do it because the slate on that thing is 600 pounds. How do you guys even put it together if it's, you know, something's going to be auctioned off or donated or sold or something at some point? I mean, why would you put a huge pool table together at a storage place that you know is going to be be because it's going to some place else probably? Be because it, because if, when you lay the slate down, if you're not laying it down properly, if you're not storing the thing properly, it warps the, the table. I, I, I mean, this is what they're telling me. The, the ship, and it only took us 10 minutes. You had four legs, two of them are attached. You put it up underneath, you had four screws each, pretty decent sized screws. You put it, now that the thing was all jacked up because it was a, a coin operated pool table. So it was all jacked up. But and what we did is we went out and I bought pool balls and sticks and triangles and we were going to put it up for auction at the Legion. And if the Legion didn't want to auction it, we were going to donate it to the Legion. Well, as I said, at this point, Overton starts coming into the picture, maybe a little later than this. And I just kind of left it over there and forgot about it. Joe wasn't using the building for anything. And it's still there to this day. Um, it, and it, I was accused at one point, so you know, for the record, that thing was never, my wife would never have a pool table at my house. No. I just want to go pool, play pool, go to the Legion. But no. were there uh, at times that people, well, let me back up and say, do you recall the address or the intersection where that? I want to say it was his uh, Agora Circle. In that area. I, I've been to the place probably four or five times in my life. The table itself, uh, having just talked about that, one of the other things that came up, and there again, are you, you have anything else on the table that was on the table, about the table? Oh, just at the property, you mentioned there was an apartment in the back. Was there a time where It was like an efficiency. Did, yeah, did Stu Buchanan lived there for a short period. Okay, and then was there a period where people that worked for the city would hang out in that never. location? Uh, now, there are city council members hung out there. Okay. I never would do that because it... Uh, okay, so, but, I mean, I guess... Because what? I mean... I just wouldn't do it. Why? I just wouldn't do it. I heard, uh, I heard, I heard a nasty rumor. I couldn't verify it that there were used, uh, somebody in that organization or that group was using code, and I wasn't going to go down that path. What so. was that? Did I answer? Sure. It came back to me that uh, unverified. Uh, right. It came back to me that uh, uh, Councilman Bailey was using code, snorting code in that apartment. That's what got back to me. And how'd you hear that? I heard it from one of the guys that saw him do it. Who would that be? Stevie Gann. And, and what I did immediately, because he's a school teacher, Title I school, I called a guy, a friend of mine, and I didn't want to drag him into this, but Jason West, who's a detective with the DCSO. I called him, I said, Jason, this is what I heard. They said they got the, the coat from Alabama Mose. I said, what do we got? How, I didn't want to call my own police department, on no, my own council member. I wanted to see if there was any anything that we had to do at that point, or what my responsibility was 
And he goes, Dave, I got this. He goes, uh, if uh, you hear anything else, he said, it doesn't sound like you have enough. You just have hearsay in any moment. And at that point, I'm seeing Stu for what he is. He's not a very honorable guy. So, so I said, okay. So I just let it go at that point. But I made it a point never to go back to that place because that's not, that's not where I need to be. Prior to that, did you go there a lot? No. And like I said, I went there three or four times. Um, but the pool table being set up there and city employees hanging out there potentially doing drugs, I mean, the optics, a little bit of an overuse word nowadays, it looks like you're using this donated item to facilitate this sort of hangout party place. And that's what it, it looks like. But sure. I, I disagree. It was put in there. There was no one living there at the time. To me, it's a good place to store. Now, once I found out someone was living in the apartment and the table was being used for recreation by the apartment owner and friends, a different story. Right. So, I don't. But at that time, them. if I'm getting the time frame correct, mm -hmm. you were out and Overton was in charge. Once Steve Buchanan came in, Overton became in charge in 20, April of 2015 as when he quasi, the first email that I found in my email box mm -hmm. that shows him in charge. You know, that says, I sent him copies of the plan from the thrift store, and he said, looks good, we'll talk about it next board meeting. You know what I'm saying? And did you tell Space Coast Paratroopers um, where the pool table was? Absolutely. Okay. It, even, even the owner of the, the place went to Mr. Overton and said, look, man, I got this pool table in the middle of my place here, I want it on. This is Joe Aguilar. Yeah. And um, um, was there a point where Space Coast Paratroopers was taking cars, um, individuals, for his donations? We took uh, the, I, had, I got a call from an engineer that worked out of Orlando. I can't call his name. Uh, he wanted to donate a car to a woman veteran, mm -hmm. one of our guys. And I said, sure. I put him off and put him off. A week later, I had Matt Wolf, a guy that, that's a volunteer, was in charge of my volunteer coordinator, go pick the car up from the guy. I went over and checked the car out. I said, one guy, I can't drive it back myself. Check the car out. Chris Hamrick's wife at that time, ex-wife at that time, had just died. Uh, uh, and she had a heart attack or something. She had just died. Chris got his son in his custody. So Chris came to me and said, I'm looking for a car. And I said, well, Wolf is bringing this car back by my house. I said, let's check it out and see if it's worth its weight. He looked at the car, it had 400,000 miles on it. I mean, literally 400,000 miles on it. And it, it had bad rubber. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll tell you what, Chris. I said, I'll sign the car. Instead of me signing it to the paratroopers, I'll sign it directly over to you. And you, your kid can use it to get back and forth to school. His kid was moving from Indian River County to Brevard County. I took the I took the car over. I I think I took the car over. One of us took four hundred thousand miles on it. Yes, sir. Four hundred fifty thousand. Uh, what kind of car was it? It's a Buick. God bless American manufacturing. Mm -hmm. That's a half a million miles. Back. <laughs> yep. So I took the car over to Quick Tires, and for clarity, Quick Tires is, is Joe Aguiar's brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. I took the car over there. I said. Uh, uh, Pablo, I said, Pablo, I said, I said, this is going to a woman board. You can help me out on the cost. He gave me four tires for 400 bucks. That was different. I went back to Chris. My wife at this point, because we had spent so much of our personal job, I'm one of the largest donors to that organization. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, it comes out of my check every day. But I stopped it, obviously, when they hired a lawyer to go against me. So. But um, I, um, I, I said, look, Chris, I said, you can have the car, but you, you know, you get, it to, you know, what I put in the tires, you can have the car, basically. And I believe it was more than 400 bucks. I don't recall. You put four brand new tires on the car? Four brand new tires on the car. My wife wouldn't let the kid drive that, those tires. And so you purchased the tires from your own account? I, I believe, well, or either that or cash. He gave me the cash on it. I don't remember. Okay, is that you charge three hundred dollars to quick tires with your Space Coast Paratroopers debit card. Was that that occasion or no? No, that was I lost two two of my back tires on construction site. So I, I went to the board and I got permission to get get two tires, and they were used tires that I bought. Okay. 
I uh, found a construction site and ran over a bunch of stuff and just trash and they were good tires. Mm -hmm. So um, so as far as us verifying that you purchased these tires, would there be any records that these tires were purchased? I didn't even go to the paratrooper's name. So I, I, I went to a wounded ward where that guy's intention was. That's where he wanted the thing to go. And I gave it to, uh, I gave it to Chris so that his kid could die and go to school. And then you're saying, do the other board members were aware of this car being donated? To Not school? until after the fact. Okay. I was uh, Don Overton asked me about it several months ago, okay. and I told him exactly what I just told him. And then um, Hamrick, you said reimbursed you for the cost of the tires? Well, I think it was more, the tires were more than what he, than what he gave us back. But when he gave us, he, he stopped by and gave my wife the money for the tires. I wasn't home, and I and she didn't know exact cost. So he said, Dave said it would be about 400 bucks. So she gave him 400 bucks to Christine. Or didn't even, she didn't even know. He was in an envelope, actually. I gave it to Christine, and she, you know, Christine left it for me. I said, oh, this is for the tires. Dave, I'm not this smart guy, but you confused me. Okay. <laughs> What to what to who to what more than well, the tires less than the tires? Oh, well, I gave him the car ahead of time because he didn't have the money to pay for the tires. I should clarify that. I probably mm -hmm. was. So I said, "Here's the car. Just pay me when you get the, you get the cost of the tires." And he assured me he would. And I said, "I don't believe it was more than four hundred bucks." I don't remember if I took the car in to get the tires or somebody else did or Matt Wolf did. I truly don't because I, I use the guy a lot. I, kids that drive, and, you know. And, 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 and he's a very valuable uh, friend of the paratroopers who left the time. So he gave us good. Was, was a very valuable um, friend of the, the quick tires. Okay. The guy quick tires. What has he done for the uh, paratroopers? He, he, tires? he gave. He helped out with uh, uh, with other people. Matt Wolf needed tires, and he understood Matt was working a lot with the paratroopers, and he was my volunteer coordinator. So he gave tires to Matt. No, he didn't give tires to him. He gave him a good price. So he sold tires to Matt also. Sure, okay. he's a businessman. I just never heard him pop up. What other things did he do for paratroopers? I mean, that, you know, he helped that house out with that car. Uh, he didn't have to do. I went over there and didn't want to charge back the the paratroopers that much because of the tires. I mean, he gave me a good deal on the tires. And he's a, he, I know Joe Aguiar. Joe Aguiar's a friend. Mm -hmm. And you don't buy from your enemies. You buy from your friends. Mm -hmm. You know. And so I wanted to throw him in the business. That's all. And he, he, he was a good man. He is a good man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, look. The, the short and long of the car was the car was never in the name of the paratroopers. I let them know when they asked me. Uh, Sergeant Hammer qualified. So the guy wanted to go to one of our wounded warriors. Uh, Sergeant Hammer more than qualified for that. So I didn't think I did anything. Now the, the, the guys were a little upset with me, said we should have put it in that name, then went out and paid for that title transaction, then put it in the other name, paid for that title transaction. You know what I'm saying? By the time you get through that, you're spending 400 bucks. Well, you know, I understand, like, like Bridget had said about the optics, it just it looks it looks funny. Sure. It looks bad, and I mean that's the same thing. Back, you know, just segueing over to to Trey, uh, you know, you've got explain this whole walk walk us through this whole air conditioning thing. You know, you say he did some work for you, or did some work for an organization like with Coy Clark and getting eight lots. I'm not familiar with that. That that doesn't uh, ring a bell, and, and obviously Coy's business is real close so we can just zip one over there and sure. verify that. Yeah. But you're saying he gave how many lots? Eight, eight lots. Okay. And so Trey has something. Quay Clark donated eight lots specifically to the Space Coast Paris yes, Association based on lobbying from Trey right. Trey, Trey never lobbied for us. He was a representative. Okay. Okay. we got to be careful it's in his business because yes. it hurts him. Right. Um, when I so use does the Space Coast Paratroopers have Fulton under some sort of agreement or contract ahead of time? Or how you know, I think we just took it to the board. I don't think we were that formal yet. And as I told you at the very beginning of this, this whole yeah. nonprofit stuff, mm -hmm. administratively, well, I, uh, I have an invoice here from uh, Trey's yes. his business. You got that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Right. And then my well, very specifically says non lobbying. Yeah. Right. Right. Make sure so we don't it, cross it, any lines yeah. now. And then too many attorneys. I also. Sure. You know how many times he told me to say that? And then I have a check from Space Coast Paratroopers for $1,500 to drag. Yes. You got that? Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Um, Thank you. So, in my opinion, Trey was responsible for bringing 
$5,000 gift card, Home Depot gift card into that organization, as well as five lots, uh, as well as a resolution that was going before the governor, before uh, 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 before Hammer, uh, I mean, uh, Overton took over. So when um, that document that your attorney was referring to, the, I think it's an invoice. Sure. For $5,000, I believe in the fall of 2014, between Downtown Consulting and Space Coast Paratroopers. Sure. What, um, that document is produced way later. Space Coast Paratroopers didn't have a copy of it. Um, but what's your recollection of the agreement at that point with Trey Fulton? I knew the Trey. I knew that Trey was working as Dale Lindell for us. Not only did he show up every week and do it, but... Okay, but what was Space Coast Paratroopers? I, I, I mean... I, I don't recall the exact details. I knew that he was going to represent us and do exactly what he did. And they, Space Coast Paratroopers so, agreed to pay him $5,000? And eventually, and eventually, there, you know how much money they, this, the, uh, the state of Florida gives veterans organizations every year? Okay. Yeah. Millions. Okay, but at this point, Space Coast Paratroopers, I don't even know, has $5,000 in their checking account at all. So it seems a little bit dubious to me that they right. put someone under contract for more than they even have in their account. Right. So explain to me how that happens, because it makes no sense from this side. And of I, understand, I understand it makes no sense. I'm, okay. What I'm telling you is, is when we put, we didn't even put him under contract. What we did is we said we would pay you for your services. When we started reaping the benefits of those services, I went to the board and said, we got to pay this guy back because he, it was because of him that Coy Clark gave us those eight properties. I'm not saying it was 100% because of him, but he had the relationship with Coy. I did. Okay. So eight properties are worth 5000 apiece. Yeah. At what point do you agree to pay him $5,000? I never that? agreed. I think that, that I, I think as a board we talked about it. And I think that he, he said he would bill us for a service. And I can't recall because okay. we're talking. So you don't recall this invoice being presented to Space Coast? Oh, I do recall that. $5, that, that was sent to, uh, I think, Havy R got that. I, I believe Havy R got it. Okay. It was never sent to me. I never saw it before this whole mess. Okay, but were you aware that it existed? Yes, at that I was. Time? Absolutely. Okay. Um, when we agreed to pay him back to the air, you know, with the air conditioning. Okay, but this is this is six months. This document purports to be six months prior to any more than six months prior to any air conditioning thing. In the fall of 2014, before Trey is elected to city council, Space Coast Paratroopers agrees to pay him $5,000, and I say that with a question mark because no one seems to recall that, but yet this document appears X amount of years later. I'm telling you It doesn't make sense to me, so I'm just hoping I, A you lot of stuff in me. our books doesn't make sense to anybody. Okay. Because we weren't experts at doing books. We were all paratroopers okay, and but one's an air commission guy, one's a newspaper Do you recall agreeing on Space Coast paratroopers agreeing to pay Trey Holton $5,000? I don't recall the, the amount, Richard. I truly don't. I just know that he knew when he had billed for his services. Okay. Um, all right. So then we are, and your attorney has these as well. I'm sure you've seen them. Um, Actually, I haven't. Well, we'll, we'll show you. you. You may have, may just not recall. But um, May of 2015, so at this point, Trey Holton is on, on city council. Um, Space Coast Paratroopers writes check to Holton Strategies for $1,500. What was that for? Specifically? Um, Why did they pay? Why did you guys pay? Like I said, we asked him. He, he, he came up with the eight lots. And by this point, he had eight lots and, and a uh, $5,000 gift card from, uh, from Home Depot. I mean, specifically, I don't know why they cut the check at that point. Yeah. We did talk, we did have an invoice. Why, if we didn't have an invoice at this point, why would we, why would we be writing checks? So we must have had the invoice before we wrote the check, right? We just didn't have the money at the time. No one recalls it, but well, I'm hoping that we just decided to write him checks without an agreement, prior agreement. 
I don't know how they, that's why we're asking it. Oh, I, I see where you're going with your stuff. Well, okay. at this point, Trey's on. on city council, so it does right. not look good that he is being I, paid. I didn't click in my head, guys. Okay. What, which one you're going with, so I apologize. I'm sorry. Well, we're just trying to get at the truth. There's no necessary no, no. way we're going at it. It just doesn't make sense to us. Well, I'm going to tell you, we had an agreement with Trey, and Trey was going to bill us for his services. Walk me through this, because I'm very simple. I'm okay. just going to put me it right too. out there. We had an agreement. Who is we? Space Coast Paratroopers Association has an agreement with Trey. That's, that's a corporate individual. Who are we talking about? The three of you? The three of us. Javier, right. yourself, and Jerry Lawson. Right. Okay. When did you meet? How did you meet? How did this even come up about Trey? I met uh, Javier Molineris. 2006, probably, at the 82nd Airborne Association. Right. Right. Just talking about specifically this. Could you look at... You're talking about specifically meeting these right. guys? Well, or? This is 2015 that the checks issued. So when do you meet? When does when does you, as the collective board, meet and agree to retain Trey? It was way back in 2014. Okay. So um, sometime in 2014, probably winter 2014. Okay. We'll say I'm guessing. Guys. Okay. I'm the the approximations are fine. I'm not. It's not I'm just trying to get the. the Sure. And scope of it. I don't care about the finite day and week and, uh, to a great extent, but you're talking about you three meet, and how does the topic of Trey come up? Who in, who knows Trey? Who introduces Trey into? I, I know Trey, and Javier knows Trey. Okay, so who brings Trey into the into the mix? I believe it was both of us, Javier and myself. But now you have to understand the vision of the organization if you want to go down this path. Sure. sure. The vision of the organization, I thought we could get so much bigger. There were several, and I hate to take you down as this in the weeds, pull me back. Our job is okay. in the weeds. Okay. There were several things that we were doing at once. We were doing thrift store, we were doing uh, uh, homes, we were doing, you know, these were visions that I had, of the direction I wanted to take the organization. We were doing financial counseling. Uh, the Davidson both are financial counselors through some program mm -hmm. that they paid a lot of money to get through. Okay. And, and I will pull you back for the week. Okay, let my ADD right in and then we'll be Yeah, he can. <laughs> so, <laughs> from a standpoint, that. I know, what were you thinking? From a standpoint of this meeting, I mean, I understand you guys are trying to do a lot of good things. Your your vision uh, of bringing this together, at some point, you and or Javier feel like that's going to be that somehow Trey can bring something sure. to the table to facilitate that. Absolutely. No summary? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. That's a, you said it better than and, I said. For the things you've already explained, Trey did bring some things to the table. Right. Okay, so then this is payment for those services. Yeah, payment. It, when you hire somebody like that, sometimes you don't do anything for them that month. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it wasn't hired like that so, month. Okay, that's fine. I, but then we come to Space Coast Paratroopers paying for Trey Holton's air conditioning repairs. Sure. So that's what that check is. Well, one of our board members is Jerry uh, Lawson, who's Ranger Air and Heat. We had a balance left, from the best of my memory, we had a balance left on the initial invoice. Uh, and Trey agreed, and that wasn't even me. you didn't recall the invoice. Was Overton on board when the check was cut for $1,500 to hold it? Oh, when, when was the check cut? Um, May 16th. Uh, he was on board in April, on April of 2015. And you were I was, on your way out. I was transitioning into the city at that time, transitioning all so my... So Jerry wrote this check, he signed this check, does that mean that he had the consent of at least one right. other board member? He had the consent of both of us, I remember. Distinctly, both of us. Say if I agree that we owed the bill and we were going to pay it. Okay, so you're saying that you owe a balance, you owe money to Trey. Because right. you haven't paid him in full. Right. Okay, so then why don't you just pay him, how does it become the air conditioning service. Well, Trey said that it, Trey air conditioning broke at the same time. So we have an air conditioning guy. So we figured we would barter for services. He bartered. He approached us. And we bartered for services to pay off the rest of the, okay. where and he forgave. Who did Trey negotiate with? You called you, called Jerry? He called me. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember the whole conversation. I know I gave him Jerry's number. And I know those two worked it out. I know Jerry called one of us back. I know he called one of us back to verify it was okay if he moved on this and that we would pay for his 
the parts for the thing and he would donate his labor. And that's to the best of my knowledge, guys. I don't know. Did you um, did you call Jerry and say we have a veteran in need and could you fix his air conditioning? I absolutely did say that. Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. But so that's something pretty different than yeah. we owe him money. No, but we did and at the same token we owed him money. Okay. But did you say we have a veteran in need? Absolutely did. I said he and, and he and we owe him money. So this could be a win win. And you, you saying that will refresh my memory because okay. I did say that. So Jerry Larson knew that he was fixing Councilman Holton's air conditioning because he he's a veteran in need and we owe him money? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we, the, the invoice, I know, we all knew about the invoice, I mean, in 2014, or not the invoice, the. Uh, the agreement with uh, Trey in 2014, 20. Just to understand that, because when we ask these questions, there's, you know, you've got a, a multitude of different, even if you've got three people, like in your case of the board, you know, it's not necessarily just because you say it happened, right. that one or both or, or, or a multitude of other people didn't say it differently. That's why we have to ask these questions. And Brad, I'm trying yeah. to give you the best, I'm no, trying to give you a straight up answer, guy. Sure. I'm, I'm trying to be as truthful as I possibly can and get the dates right. I just have couple questions when it comes though to you got the dance services. All over. <laughs> yeah, well, when the coffee's kicking in now. No, no, 48, um, I watched 48 hours. I fell asleep with forensic files on the other night. Right. I can solve any damn murder on the world. Right. <laughs> well, when it, comes, when it comes to the services, I mean, there's been a lot of uh, scuttlebutt about what Trey did or did not do. Uh, and one of the things, when you say that he, he got eight lots, what lots are we referring to? Because the Coy Clark Coy Clark donated eight properties. There were a couple on Pace. I went to all of them, but I don't remember where I. Uh, uh, I even went. Uh, I even went and uh, clean, cleared some of those properties. Who did he specifically donate that to? Space Coast Paratroopers. Space Coast Paratroopers, yes, sir. And did he do that through you, through yes, sir. Trey, or who? Through the parent. Well, Trey introduced me to Coy. I met Coy before, but I didn't have the relationship like Trey mm -hmm. did with him. Trey saw him at a movie. And we had a table set up. It was a lone survivor. Mm -hmm. And he came over and he said, you know, he read about us in the newspaper. I had the Wagners sitting at the table. And Trey was sitting at the table, too. Uh, and the guy came by, Coy Clark, and pulled Trey aside and said, are you involved with this organization? He goes, yeah. He said, it's a good organization. Built us up, did his job. And he goes, I got some lots I want to donate from me to help out. Yeah. Did he do deeds to these lots to Space Coast paratroopers? Yes, sir. And then did Space Coast paratrooper deed those to the city? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. We donated them to the city. Yeah. We had to pay closing costs. That was part of the agreement. And we had to do pay for surveys. Paratroopers. To the best of mind, I think we paid for all the surveys. We also paid for a survey on four and a half acres where we would put our duplexes for our, our single guys. I don't know if you guys know about that. No. Oh, I don't want to even go down there. So, um, and so you're saying that because of Trey's relationship with Troy, Coy. I mean with Coy, I'm sorry, and uh, that they went on and off, and this is how this, you guys are at movie theater. Wouldn't, and wouldn't have happened without Trey. Okay. And then he mentioned also that with the services he provided, uh, that you were able to get a gift card, a $5,000 gift card from Home Depot. I'm not sure of the process and how he did that, but I think he worked really closely with Overton. Or maybe Abby or Bob Williams. I, I don't I don't recall how that happened. I just know that because of Trey that that happened. Uh, so that I'm not a big Home Depot fan. Of, why is that? I just I've never been on. It's a long story. Okay. But, but nothing it's a personal. To do with nothing to do with that. Okay. No. Who would you have turned that card into? That that card came to the organization. Bob okay. Williams bought materials with that card. Okay. We gave it to Bob Williams because he was the, the purchasing guy for the for the organization. You know, Trey was in contact with at Home Depot. No, sir. I wish I could tell you that. Yeah. So just um, I mean, if you talk, kind of moved on from the air conditioning. Yeah, I'll tell you. Have a follow up. Um, it just does not look good that Space Coast Paratrooper is paying to have a city councilman's air conditioning fixed. But was there any discussion about this? It's not really the way we should be doing business with city councilmen. There was there was discussion that we we, we shouldn't hire politicians anymore. 
because mm -hmm. because of that very thing. But it was in passing. It wasn't in a formal meeting. Okay. And I believe it was uh, maybe Jerry or maybe I, I don't know one of the two. And then, uh, then the and I agreed with him. Yeah. I said I didn't at the time we brought Trey on board. I, I didn't know he was going to run. I mean, I'm his, one of his closest friends, and I didn't know he was going to run. Mm -hmm. I'll never deny my friendship with any of my friends. So you didn't uh, support Trey's? Oh, family? I did, absolutely, okay. when he decided he was going to run. Okay. But I told him he had to cut our ties with us if he got elected. 